got a lava stationery, don't we? We've got it glitz and glam and whatever else it may be. I need to pack my bags and get ready. Hi guys, obviously at this point in time it is promised basically this is going to just hopefully be the last of my also living change series as promised to you guys. This one's all about transitions and starting skills. So hopefully if you're liking these series that I just collabed up right now based on the Autism Man Change series, please comment below if you did or smash the like button for me so that we can be in progress mode. And don't forget to check out some of the other stuff that's going down with me at this point of time through these other sites that I'm hoping to link up to my YouTube channel and everything else at this point of time. So let's begin this. As we know, basically, when it comes down to starting or changing any school, for anybody, not just autistic children, a lot again, people with you know autism spectrum disorders that do tend to find change really difficult. As we know, basically, that this may include for most of us starting or moving to a new school because obviously we're so comfortable in the same environment, same routine, same familiar faces and whatnot, and it just basically really, really it's just overwhelms us to the point that a sensory overload will basically come into effect obviously instead of meltdown through kids but in saying this though there are some ways we can actually go about you know how to survive our first years of school or many of the years of school which I'm hoping today will be of good use to you and just to be in mind as an disclaimer some of the stuff I have researched and what not may not be from New Zealand sites I have to apologize in advance to any New Zealanders that are watching me because as I said some of these series that I am bringing up to you right now will come to play and effect due to the limited resources that we have here in New Zealand so I'll be basing it through some of the UK sites versus the United States sites of certain findings that I find regardless of what it may be. So as you are aware as I said before that sometimes we need to be in mind of all these changes regardless of what it may be as we transition from you know children, child to adult regardless of what it may be you know so I suggest that maybe to watch some of the transition, you know, autism and change series that are already up there on my playlist and so I'll link it up to the description or in the eye bar, hopefully on the top right hand screen for you of the playlist for you guys to follow through if you haven't done so already. So just need to be in mind though, when it comes down to it though, we need to support the child in advance of doing and after and before these change period of changes happen, regardless of what it may be. You can also find some guidance however on working with the school when your child starts with getting your child's education needs met as they progress on and the legal duties for transitioning support across the UK, especially what I'm just talking to you. So preparing for the change. Here are some strategies that you may find as well as the local or educational authority of the school could help use to help your child to prepare for the change. Sometimes when we're carrying our backpacks around, sometimes we tend to want to have some familiar books or some familiarity of certain stuff that will make us feel like we're at home and whatnot. You know, hearsay may want to have basically some form of familiarity just to bring it at ease as well as a safety blanket or something along those lines as well if you were younger. Also, as we're transitioning, however, though, from, you know, primary to intermediate to high school, some people may end up bringing emergency kits that are a toiletry shape kind of bag or some Ziploc bag if need be or some form of sign anyway that will have, have inside of that maybe their, like, sanity items for girls, basically, of, you know, L top of the monthly stuff, he say paracetamols, any meds that we take, be, be it whatever it is, tissues, hand sanitizers, perfumes, deodorants, hand creams, as well as the hand sanitizers, and the list goes on if we wish to do so. And I thought that, that some people may end up wanting to probably put it in some makeup and whatnot, but then, you know, that's fine. Also, on top of that, though, we need to be in mind that, you know, if for some of us autistic, like, we want to avoid the crowd or avoid any communication with any of people sometimes just due to the fact that the way we are, obviously, is maybe just to be sure that we can have a water bottle intact, filled up every time, time in, time out. Extra food or snack items on the go for us so that we don't have to rush into the canteen if need be to socialise if we don't want to due to the noise and that. And as we go on to that though, like, 
within our teenage years, adult years, some of us might end up feeling nervous and all that and anxious and everything else or feel like that we're going to have our panic attacks and whatnot. Some of us maybe have some mints or chewing gum on hand to chew on throughout the day and hopefully we won't be a distraction to the classroom like some people I used to know back in the days in high school. All the joys of that when they were chewing their cuds loudly and you can't even hear the teacher when all my sole focus was fully on the gum and not on the teacher due to the white background noise. And saying this also though, basically with the mints and stuff, this can be a good way of when we're sitting preparing ourselves for exams as well basically, or when we're feeling sick, become cooler and calmer and fresher, so to speak. And also in saying this, and some of the other tips is, would you visit school several times a year or just several times with your child before they start, maybe just to, you know, as a a thing for you is to meet and take photos of any key people who will be involved in their transition stages sort of thing, maybe make a photo album of some kind and write down the information that they can refer to as a little help guide to relieve any anxieties and whatnot. You may be able to arrange your face entry into the new school by basically meeting break the teachers and whatnot and then hopefully within the same that of meeting and greeting the teachers is again maybe just see if they can kindly write down some information about them and whatnot and where to find them if need be. Another one is using visual aid support. Obviously we know that basically when it comes down to it this will help the child to understand what will be happening and reinforce some verbal communication. These will need to be used more than once however throughout the day particularly if the change is going to take place over a prolonged period of time. When using visual supports it's important to be clear about one using clear language and give your child time to process to what was said to make sure that you show some of the outcomes as well as the stages of the process. For example, if you are using a visual support aid to explain a bush journey to, the, to school for them, make sure you use pictures of the whole process, including them arriving at school. Last but not least, maybe marking the day of the change on a calendar to, and to encourage your child to count them towards that day and hopefully make them feel like they're at home day. While you're transitioning and changing into school also, sometimes we we feel a bit edgy or uncomfortable and whatnot and sometimes many people may carry extra clothing for warmth, comfort, you know, and whatnot. But I would say that though how I look at it is we need to be in mind that some of the teachers or educational support people around us might not tolerate certain layers of clothing so we need to have the right sort of clothing and follow through the school etiquette of maybe having the right sizing basically of no shorts or tops, short tops exposing our boobs and everything else basically. Another one also is using social skills which obviously short descriptions of a particular situation or you know, activity that may come up include the specific information about what to expect in that situation and why could you help your child or could help your child know what to expect in that new school. Should a teacher maybe be able to accept certain things as well of what is needed. Also some people may take sunglasses or headphones because some autistics or children with autism spectrum disorder or any kids that you know find sensitivity to noise or you know, bright sunlight or bright lights, but you know, due to the different change in the environment, of especially in the way of temperature versus you know, just you know, sunlight throughout the day, we need to be in mind that we need to be prepared just in case we get a bit of discomfort in the eyes and stuff, and it's things else and whatnot. Headphones is a good way to just you know, block out any light noise or background noise, whatever it may be, he say, as well, if need be, in the school and it gets too much for us sort of thing and sometimes I used to remember doing that a lot and the way people look at me when I'm humming to some songs when I've got the headphones in. Another thing we could do also is maybe some fidget toys or some form of comfort toys that we want to just basically. Extra notepads can come in handy not just for you know writing assignments or anything but maybe to write down our thoughts of the day you know as well writing down assignments and what is due with the time and keep a planner on us at all times, you say. Sometimes we may need to wear watches or whatever, but it, sometimes it doesn't always happen that way for some of us as well. Um, 
do some preparation in the current setting. So therefore what I'm meaning here is that in the current school that your child is in, you could organise individual or group work on preparing for the transition. That could include some of the activities in the curriculum that will help your child with the transition, such as independent living skills. You can also communicate with staff and share information. Share information with staff at the new school about your child's needs, likes, dislikes, capabilities, difficulties, what causes them anxiety, discomfort and whatever else. Effective communication between you, your child, the authority school and any other support services involved will make a positive difference in this transitioning. Also, in saying this, so some of us may need our personal space or find a place where we find comfort in our, in our time when we do feel anxious or a meltdown is about to be or some, sometimes I used to remember I used to just be underneath a tree and just breathe in and out and stuff and do my normal everyday thing of whatever it may be. He say um, another one could be basically some people might find comfort in a bus shelter on a field or what have you and whatnot. Um and so just though when we do feel like an anxiety or panic attack and all that comes along, we need to be, remember to let the lateral teacher know or whoever is with us and stuff and whatnot. Having a key worker or transitional co coordinator, however, can help with this also, of this making positive difference. And with preparing a transitional plan or including targets and support strategies in an existing something or educational plan will be of use and value to you. So, also, managing your child's anxiety, if you're concerned that your child might become particularly anxious about a certain change, make sure you give them the opportunity to ask the questions about their concerns and explain what the change will benefit them. You could also provide them a word to walk box where they can write or draw their concerns in. Set aside some time to try and teach some relaxation techniques if you can. Create an anxiety plan or a social story to explain what your child should do if they are anxious and remind them to use any relaxation techniques that they have. Find out more about supporting your assisted people to prepare for change. During the change, question yourself when the change is taking place to keep familiar things close to your child and make sure you communicate clearly with them of these changes. Give specific instructions without using any gestures or specific facial expressions. This will help them to process what's being said to them more effectively. Using visual supports and a visual timetable can help your child to understand what's happening, giving them lots of praise for coping with the change and adapting to this new routine. Many children studying new schools will already have attended an early education setting such as nursery and may have their needs identified early and have them met. Information gathered by the earlier setting should be passed on to the child's new school so that they can be prepared for their new admission set period. If your child is or young person is starting secondary school, however, any information about the educational needs gathered by child's primary or preference school should be passed on to the new school. Keep in regular contact with staff working with your child to see how they are progressing on. If you notice that the school isn't dealing with specific behaviours appropriately or using a means of communication that your child is so familiar with, bring this to attention to the relevant staff and arrange a meeting with them if, if you deem necessary. What the new sh school should do though, however, when your child starts a new school, the school is likely to access the child's needs of attainment even though they may already have received information from a previous setting. If your child has additional support or special educational needs when they start school, soft short one, use information provided by the previous setting to develop an appropriate curriculum for, for them and for the child. Two, access, identify and focus on your child's skills in areas where support will be needed in class. Three, ensure that there is ongoing observation and assessment in order to plan the next few steps of their journey in school. Six, involve yourself in developing and implementing a joint learning approach at home as well as in the school. 7. You can also give staff information on how to deal with any specific behaviours or obsessions. Official support such as PECS, Picture Exchange Communication System, boards have recently been used then as well that these are made available to your child. Some obsessive children and young people find it difficult to transfer skill, certain skills into different situations. Supporting these means of communication in place is really crucial. They can also have complex sensory issues as I said and may become anxious due to the different smells, tastes, noises and lights in the different environment of the school. To help them cope with this you can ask the school if they are able to take a, take in something that is reassuring and familiar to them of a smell, taste or what have you. Some people are sensitive to bright lights or noise so as I said sunglasses or earplugs 
may be beneficial or even headphones. Schools are responsible for making reasonable adjustments to help their autistic people feel more comfortable and at ease in that classroom environment. Above and yourself as parents. Parents should always be consulted and keep them informed of the action to keep their child, to help their child and of the outcome of any of this action needed. The school must tell you when they first giving extra or different help for your child because they have additional support or educational needs. The extra or different help could be one, a changed way of teaching, two, some help from an extra adult, perhaps in a smaller group, so that they can have one on one learning with someone of a reader, writer, or what have you. Use of particular equipment such as a computer or a desk with a sloping top, what have you. Remember, you know your child better than anyone, so talk to the school if you have any concerns about their education. And also, as a little friendly advice, be brave, be you, ask for yourself for some help, you know, help, however, aim high, remember that this is not forever, basically for you to be in school, you know, just let everything happen in your journey, regardless what it is, have fun, laugh, smile, and everything else will fall into place. So this quickly ends briefly of my autism and change transitioning of studying and or switching schools, give me the like, thumbs up for sport, comment below, feel free to comment below also if I've missed out any of the tips that would be useful for anybody that is changing or transitioning from you know primary, intermediate or whatever level of school, feel free to subscribe to me and share out the other and so to follow me on my journey and also feel free to, while you're down there, maybe to turn on the notification bell so you can keep up to date of what FSB is up to. Feel free to also share these videos around to family and friends. So I'm all for the third guys. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Do what you love. Love what you do. Until next time, it's me signing out and I'll see you.